Okay, so I'm going to try and take it slow so that <clears throat> I don't lose it. Same process. We're going to switch x and y. Okay, so we've got x equals 5 over y minus 2. Now, we've got to be careful with this. We've got to get y by itself. Right now, y is in the denominator. So we've got to get it out of the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by y minus 2. So it cancels on the right side. Now we're not going to distribute that x. Okay? I repeat, we are not going to distribute the x. We're going to leave it like it is right there. We're trying to get y by itself there on the left side. So I'm going to turn around and divide both sides by the x. Now what's the only thing we have to do to get y by itself? Add 2. And that just gets added to the end there. So f inverse of x is equal to 5 over x plus 2. Make sure that the plus 2 is separate from that fraction. This is also a rational function because x is in the denominator. Okay, So the inverse of a rational function is another rational function. Now, b looks a little different. It's still irrational. b looks like the inverse we just got. So maybe its inverse will look like that first original equation. Let's find out. Switch x and y. x is equal to 7 over y plus 4. Now we've got to be careful with this. We don't, the first thing we do is not multiply by y. We've got to move that 4 first. Subtract 4 from both sides. x minus 4 is equal to 7 over y. Now we're going to multiply by y to get it out of the denominator. Just like in the last problem, we're not going to distribute it. Okay, We are not going to distribute that. We're just going to leave it the way it is so that our final step here is to divide by the x minus 4 to get y by itself. So g inverse of x is equal to 7 over x minus 4. Now, if you want to check and see if you've done this correctly, uh, let's look at what we're looking for in our calculator. We go to our y equals, we put 7 over x, might be a good idea to put that in parentheses, 7 over x, parentheses, plus 4. Okay, that was the original function. And then we type in our function, 7 over, you have to put the x minus 4 in parentheses. Whenever there's more than one term, variable, number, or anything, in a numerator or a denominator, you have to put parentheses around. 7 was the only term in the numerator. We don't have to put parentheses around the 7, but we do have to put it around the x minus 4. So when I go to my table... What I'm going to look for is, I'm hoping there are some whole numbers here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1, 11. Okay, let's look right here at the bottom. We've got x equals 1, y equals 11. Inverses switch x and y. So when I go to 11 for my x, I should be expecting 1 as my y value for the inverse. The inverse was in y2. So that's one way you can check. Um, here's another one. 5, 7. Okay, 5, 7. So when I go to 7, I should see 5 as my y value. Okay, so look for things like that if you want to check and see if your 
if you calculated the inverse correctly. Okay? All right. Uh, let's do a couple more like this. h of x equals 7 over x plus 4. So switch x and y. x equals 7 over y plus 4. We've got to get y by itself. It's stuck in the denominator right now, so we've got to get it out of the denominator by multiplying it by both sides. We don't distribute. We leave it the way it is. So x times y plus 4 is equal to 7. We divide by the x. y plus 4 is equal to 7 over x. And then last step, subtract the 4 from the end. h inverse of x is equal to 7 over x minus 4. J of X is equal to 7 over X. <clears throat> Switch X and Y. X equals 7 over Y. Y is in the denominator. So we're going to multiply it by both sides. X times Y equals 7. Divide by X. So we get y equals 7 over x. Well, that's what we started with. That's kind of weird. It is possible. It's rare, but it is possible for a function to be its own inverse. It is possible for a function to be its own inverse. Okay, uh, let's look at one more here. K of x is equal to x squared. So a quadratic equation. Now notice in parentheses, it's got for x is greater than 0. We talked about that right here. Um, it's like graph number 3, x minus 3 squared. It's just shifted over a little bit. Okay, so they've restricted the domain so that its inverse is a function. That's all that stuff in parentheses means. Okay, it doesn't impact the way that you solve it, they're just making it so that the inverse is a function. Okay, so x equals y squared. How do we go y by itself here? Square root. The opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So that means k inverse of x is equal to the square root of x. Now usually whenever we take the square root, I try to remind you that you always include the positive and the negative, but since this says x is greater than 0, then um, your, uh, what am I trying to think of, the range for the inverse is going to be y is greater than 0. So it, you only consider the positive square root of the function. You don't do the negative. Okay? All right. Let's look at um, graphically. Okay, graphically. In some situations, they will give you just a table or they'll give you just a graph. Now, we're going to look at the graph first because I think it's easier to... Uh, visualize than the table is. The table can be a little confusing. Let's look at the graph first. Okay, so um, these points represent the function g of x and we want to graph the inverse. So we're going to switch the x's and y's. So I'm going to start down there in the left corner of this graph. If we have the point negative 5, negative 3, then on the inverse it's going to be the point negative 3 
negative 5. So x is negative 3, the y's are negative 5. If we have the point negative 2, negative 1 on the original, then the point negative 1, negative 2 is going to be on the inverse. So I've done this one, I've done that one. Negative 4, 0, switch the x and the y. 0, negative 4. Negative 3, positive 1, switch x and y. Positive 1, negative 3. Negative 1, positive 2, switch x and y, positive 2, negative 1. Zero, 4, switch x and y, 4, 0. 1, 5, switch x and y, 5, 1. And the last point, 2, 3, switch x and y, 3, Two. Okay, so that's what the inverse looks like. All the red dots on my graph here are the points on the inverse. Now, the reason why there's a line right there through the middle of the graph, that's the line y equals x. Now, for me personally, I'm not that much of a visual kind of person, but I know some of y'all are really in art and um, visual kind of stuff is your thing. If you kind of tilt your head so that that line y equals x goes straight up and down, do you see some kind of relationship between the points from the original function and the points from the inverse? My visual people, do you see some kind of relationship there in relation to that line? What? It's like flipped. It's like a mirror image. Okay, it's flipped across that line. This point right here, it's flipped right across that line. It has the same distance to that line, um, just on the other side. Okay, and that's true for all these points. That's another relationship uh, to know about inverse functions. Okay, a function and its inverse are mirror images over the line y equals x. So um, that may come up at, at some point in time, so just be aware of that relationship. Uh, now, we can put these points in uh, this table. Now that we have them graphed, it probably would have helped if I had labeled them. Um, so I'm gonna go back and do that really quickly. Zero, negative four. What was this one? One, negative two. Negative one, negative two. My bad. Uh, one, negative three. Two, negative one. Four, zero. Five, one. Three, two. So if you were asked a question about a table, I think it's easier to put them on a graph switch x and y and then you can go in and fill in your table. So when my x is negative 4, my inverse didn't have um, an x equals negative 4, so we can't put anything there. Uh, negative 3, the inverse had a y value of negative 5. Uh, negative 2 didn't have one. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 4, 1, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 3, 2, 4, 0, 5, 1. We don't have 5 on the table, but I'm going to add it so that I can get all my points on there. Okay, so all I did was from the graph plug those values into the table. Okay, I just put them where they fit. When the x value was negative 3, the y value of the inverse was negative 5. Okay? So, um, they may ask you to represent an inverse in several different ways, not just its rule. 